Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to be talking about when, if ever, you can justify fighting uphill. Imagine a situation where your army outnumbers an opponent's, but they have the high ground. Your only options are to either fight from downhill or retreat. How much bigger does your army need to be before this actually starts to be a good idea? Or is it always a bad fight? Let's check it out. To keep everything nice and simple at first, we'll assume you and your opponent both have the same units and upgrades, but I'll show you later it's only a slight inconvenience to factor in units of different strength. As you probably know, attacking downhill adds 25% to your attack, while units attacking uphill have 25% taken away. That means with equal numbers, we'd expect the units uphill to end with around 63% of whatever health they started with. Obviously, with micro you can get dramatically different results, but that probably goes without saying. In practice, without moving the units, you do tend to see around 60% of the units left over. But their combined HP is a bit worse than expected, with something like 50% plus or minus 5, as opposed to the predicted 63. I think the discrepancy is because the higher attack of uphill units causes more overkill, which is just wasted damage. The mathematical model also assumes a unit with half health is doing half of its normal damage, which again works in the downhill unit's favor. That gives us a sense of how strong the hill bonus can be, but the original question was essentially how many units do we need to add to the downhill army to make it even? And for that matter, how did I come up with the theoretical 63% calculation to begin with? As some of you may already know, it comes from the Lanchester Square Law. I've derived it before in a video where it flows from a few differential equations, and gave plenty of examples to hopefully make clear why army size is being squared. I don't want to repeat a lot of that video, so if you're skeptical, I'd refer you back to that. In this video, we'll just accept that it works and see where it takes us. A sub F is the final number of units for the winning side, the A initial is the winning side starting number, which we have to square, and B initial is the starting number for the losing side, and again we're going to square it. The alpha and beta are damage coefficients, so the downhill side is doing 25% less damage and the uphill side is doing 25% more. Don't forget to square root at the end and you'll get the expected final units at the end of the fight. The logical follow up here I think is to ask how much do we need to increase the downhill unit numbers until things are balanced. In the formula that means we want exactly 0 units left over, so A final is 0. Running the numbers we find that we need 29% more. If we're assuming there are 10 units uphill, that means we would need about 13. I'm going to be using the number 10 a lot as the baseline, as I think it's a reasonable number that puts things into perspective. But the percentage is the important thing, and it's going to be constant no matter what army size we use as a reference. In practice, it's pretty dramatic how perfectly that can play out. In the very first test I ran, they couldn't have eliminated each other any better. The predictive power of math just gives me chills sometimes. That's not to say it always works that perfectly, but the takeaway is a 29% numbers advantage means the fight could go either way. Now I understand if that seems very counterintuitive, and you may have expected to need a larger advantage. Just thinking about the math, the downhill side is attacking at 75% of their normal strength, so making their army 29% larger doesn't appear to even get us back to where they started on flat ground, while the uphill army is 25% stronger than normal. The trick is to remember the number of extra units is being squared, so we multiply by it twice, and following that to the end shows that both sides do end up with similar strength. Now immediately I hope a few of you are noticing a problem, which is this isn't actually balanced. Having 29% more units than your opponent means both of your armies should theoretically cancel out, but wait, you lost 29% more. The outcome may be roughly balanced, but your losses are definitely higher. The real question I think is when is it cost efficient where both sides are losing 10 units? That's a bit different question, and it's the one I think we really mean when we ask whether it's a good idea to take an uphill fight. It's also a bit trickier because we don't know how many units we want to end with. If we start with x, we just want to end with x minus 10. Putting all that information into the formula, you can see you need your army to be exactly one third larger to expect to lose just as much as your opponent. Again, of course there's randomness in the results, but if we average it over time, we end up with something we could actually call a fair fight. To put into perspective how much the hill advantage is helping here, on flat ground with an army one third larger, you'd expect to lose less than half of what your opponent does. 
Hill bonuses are no joke, and in this case letting them grab a hill more than doubles your losses. To get a similar result downhill and take half the losses of your opponent, you would actually need double their army size. Now one small exception you might be wondering about is the Tatar bonus for more damage when uphill. In theory, that just changes the beta coefficient of the uphill units to 1.5 instead of 1.25. It turns out in that case you need a 50% larger army instead of 33% larger to start trading balanced, though obviously again the more units the better. Of course, I also mentioned earlier that the formula can handle units of different strength. The best measure of two units relative strength, in my opinion, is the reciprocal of the time it takes for them to take out an enemy unit. It's a nice way to factor in attack, HP, and armor of both units all at once, and these can just be included in the alpha and beta in the formula. In this case, taking more time to defeat an enemy unit means a smaller strength rating, so bigger numbers are better here. To illustrate how that affects the outcome, if you're up against elite skirmishers with crossbows, you would need 44 crossbows for every 10 elite skirmishers if you wanted to trade evenly without micro. That's also not even taking into account the crossbow's higher cost. If you didn't already know, then now you do. Don't attack skirmishers with crossbows from downhill. On the other hand, with anything over half the numbers, elite skirmishers should be able to hold their own uphill against crossbowmen, so unit weaknesses are still worth taking into account. The point is just to illustrate how the 33% rule to taking balanced fights has to be flexible, and use some common sense when applying it. Now, assuming you fell asleep at the first graph and just woke up, what's the main takeaway? I'd say the easiest rule is that engaging uphill is safe as long as you have 50% more army than your opponent, and roughly equivalent units. A third more units than your opponent is pushing it, and the most likely outcome is equal losses. Anything less than that is probably a bad fight against equivalent units. So that was a deep dive into hill fighting, and hopefully it puts a theoretical framing around something you were previously guessing at. Even if you won't be pulling out your calculator mid-fight, I think it's still interesting to see the numbers behind the scenes, and that's a hill I'm prepared to die on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.